Hi guys, welcome to Caternix Corner. So in this video, we are going to be doing a hatch comparison between the GQF Sportsman, the Brinzia Ova Easy 100, and the Hatching Time CT60. Now, if you haven't already seen the incubator comparison video, I'll go ahead and link that down below. That is basically a video we did on these three units, talking about the feature sets, kind of comparing them um, side by side, and uh, to more familiarize you with these three incubators. Uh, H.P. Murray over at Gopher Ridge Quail was kind enough to send me some eggs uh, to do this uh, hatch comparison with. So big shout out to H.P. and Gopher Ridge. We, much, we appreciate it very much. Um, so what I did, uh, the first thing I had to do was um, fire up the incubators about 24 hours in advance uh, to let them come up to temperature and kind of stabilize a little bit before we uh, set our hatching eggs. Now I did get the hatching eggs yesterday, so they have been sitting uh, in the foamers oriented pointy end down and they've been sitting now for about uh, 12 to 16 hours somewhere in there and that's just to let them the air cell kind of stabilize inside the shell um, and hopefully you know give us a little bit better hatch um, the reason you want to do that is shipping is really hard on uh, on eggs um, the air cell gets jostled around sometimes it breaks loose um, so what we do is we, we just let them sit for a while and uh, Hopefully that will bring that air cell into position and uh, help it stabilize more. So basically the first thing uh, I had to do this morning was come in and uh, I wanted to run a temperature check on the uh, incubators just to make sure that everything was stable. Um, so I went in and I put uh, a couple ThermPro thermometers in each one of the units and uh, got a reading on them. Uh, but the first thing you got to do is on the N2 units, the GQF and the Brinzia, you need to level the turning tra turner trays. Uh, that way you can you know, slide your uh, egg trays in and then you can turn the turners back on. On the GQF, in order to level, you just press and hold the M button on the command center. That will uh, start turning the tray and then just release it when you want it to stop. Uh, Brinzia is a little bit different. You push the uh, OK and the minus button until it starts to turn. And when you get it to where you want, just press any other button that will put it in pause mode and stay there. Uh, the hatching time unit, you don't have to do that because it has a removable turner. Um, so you can take that out, set your eggs and then put it back in the, in the box. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to take you over to where I have the eggs and the, the turners or the uh, egg trays and uh, we'll get them set and we'll get them put in the incubator and, uh, I'll, I'll show you real quick what I found with the thermometers and uh, hygrometers as far as humidity goes on the three different units. And then we'll go ahead and get the incubation process started. I am not going to be candling eggs at any time uh, during this. I'm also um, going to be doing a dry hatch. Um, I've been able to do dry hatches down here for several years because our humidity levels are you know, usually 50% or above and, you know, we're South Florida. Um, so I haven't, I don't really need to add any water during lock or dur during incubation, but I do add water once I go into lockdown. So, okay, let me grab the other camera. We'll get you set up over there and uh, talk a little bit about the different uh, egg trays and um, get the eggs loaded and then get them in the incubator. Okay, so you can see we have our eggs and three different uh, Turner trays here. Uh, this first turner tray goes with the uh, Brinzia, uh, and you can see it has these removable slots that you can use to adjust for whatever size egg you'll be setting. Uh, this blue tray um, is actually an egg collection tray that I purchased off of uh, eBay, but it fits the GQF, and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use that as my turner tray for the G GQF. And then this tray here on the end is the hatching time turner tray. Um, I have also have uh, quail rail inserts that I purchased uh, specifically for this. Um, these quail rail inserts holds the jumbo eggs. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get our eggs set up in the uh, trays and then go ahead and get them inside the incubator. Now what I'm going to do is uh, HP sent us just about 100 eggs. So we're going to get about 30, 35 eggs per uh, incubator uh, just for this test.
Okay, so we've got the eggs set in our egg trays. Um, there's approximately 30, 31 eggs in each tray. So we're gonna go ahead and get them loaded into the incubator. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, uh, placement and uh, temperature and humidity inside the incubator when we get over there. Okay, so before we set the eggs, I want to briefly go over some of the tests that I ran on the incubator uh, prior to shooting the video this morning. Uh, what I did was I took several of my ThermPro thermometers uh, that have all been calibrated and they're, they're reading within a half a degree to a degree of each other uh, and I placed them at various levels inside the cabinets. Um, what I want to do is make sure that what I'm reading on the regulator uh, is in agreement with what my thermometers are showing. So we'll start with the GQF. Uh, I got the GQF command center set at 99.5 and I have two thermometers in, in this one, one on the upper turner rack and one on the center turner rack. Now the upper turner rack is showing 100.2 degrees at 19% humidity, and the center rack is showing 99.7 at 17% humidity. So that's pretty close uh, with what we've got set on the regulator. Now the Brinzia, I've got the regulator set pretty low. It's at 99.1 or 99.3, and I am getting some pretty concerning readings. This is on the second shelf, I've got a reading of 102.0, 101.8, and then the one way in the back there is 100.8, and they're all about 18% humidity. Um, the hatching time unit is set at 99.5, and the thermometer is showing 99.5 at 25% humidity. So I would say that that one's pretty much pretty close to being spot on. Back to the Brinzia. This one's got me a little bit concerned uh, because I have three thermometers that are in agreement with each other and yet my regulator uh, reading is you know almost almost two degrees short of what my thermometers are reading. So I'm probably going to go in and uh, reset my regulator and drop the temperature down low enough to where I can get all these thermometers to read around 99.5 degrees or within you know a half a degree of each other. Um, just to make sure that you know the Brinzia is not running warm and I, I don't want to cook the eggs. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna play with that a little bit and then uh, we'll come back and we'll uh, get our eggs set. Okay, so what I had to do was go into the regulator on the Brinzia and drop the temperature down to 98.0 degrees in order to get all my thermometers to read between 99 and 100 degrees. So I'm pretty happy with that right there. Um, the regulator just must be off about one degree. Um, would it hurt anything? Probably not, um, but leaving it at 99.5 and having temperatures up around 102, that was just a little bit too high for me. So. I decided to go in there, drop it down some, and see how much of a difference that would make. So we can go ahead now and place all our eggs in. I do want to say that uh, being down in Florida, I normally run a dry hatch. So I am going to let these incubators uh, kind of settle in around 30 to 35 percent humidity. If I do have to add water, I will add it to the water trays only just enough to bring the, ink, the uh, humidity up to about 30 to 35 percent. Um, and then when I go into lockdown is when, like on the hatching time unit, I will use the uh, Humasonic vaporizer uh, and add the uh, wicking sponges to the GQF and the Brinzia. So, okay guys, we'll be back here in about 15 days uh, when we go to put our eggs into lockdown. And then hopefully after that, we'll have a decent hatch and we can show you guys uh, exactly how each of these incubators did. Okay, so it's been 14 and a half days since we set these eggs. We're gonna go ahead and put them into lockdown tonight. I did run into a little bit of an issue with humidity uh, during the incubation cycle, uh, mainly in the GQF and in the Brinzia. Normally down here in Florida, I can do a dry hatch, meaning I don't have to add any water to the incubator during the incubation cycle. And my humidity normally stays up between 35 and 40% in the incubator. Um, I figured out that because there's so much air movement inside the GQF and the Brinzia that it was drying the air out. I was unable to keep it in that 30% range. 
Um, the uh, hatching time unit was no problem. I didn't have to worry about water in that. So I did add water to the GQF and the Brinzia during the incubation cycle just to keep the humidity levels equal across all three boxes, which was at 35%. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and pull these eggs out of the uh, egg turners and place them into the hatching baskets. And then we'll bump our uh, humidity up to about 60, 65%, put them into lockdown. And uh, hopefully in three days, we'll have a bunch of new baby chicks running around. Now on the GQF Sportsman, I place the eggs in the turner on the top rack. And the uh, thermometers were showing about 99.5 to 99.8 varying uh, during the incubation process. I am now moving them down to the bottom of the incubator, which is where the hatching tray that GQF supplies is placed. Um, I did put a thermometer down there and it seems to be holding uh, about the same temperature as it was up the top shelf. Humidity is a little bit lower down there. We're gonna make up for that by adding sponges to our uh, humidity tray. Uh, the GQF, or I'm sorry, the Brinzia and the hatching time um, hatching baskets will be going in the same spot as the hatching trays, so there should be no changes there. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, pull these eggs out. We'll get them uh, placed into the hatching basket and uh, put these eggs into lockdown. Okay, now on the, the Brinzia and the GQF, we're gonna go ahead and fill up our water trays. And I think we're gonna add our wicking sponges uh, to it also, just to make sure that that humidity stays up where we need it. Now the wicking sponge on the uh, Brinzia unit goes right in the front. Got a little slot for it. And what'll happen is the sponge will absorb the water and that basically just gives you a little more surface area of water, which helps to increase the humidity. And same with the, uh, the GQF unit. We'll go ahead and place both sponges in. I do have a couple thermometers down here in the bottom of the GQF, which also gives me humidity readings. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on the Brinzia, uh, just to have a, an idea of what's going on inside this box. Okay, so we've got our eggs placed into lockdown and we bumped our humidity up to about 60, 65%. I am going to monitor the GQF and the Brinzia uh, water reservoirs just to make sure that they don't run dry on water. Uh, the hatching time unit, I don't really have to worry about. It's got a large enough reservoir to where I, it's not going to, to run dry during the, uh, the three days of lockdown. So through the magic of video, we'll be right back. It'll be three days later and hopefully we'll have a whole bunch of chicks hatched out. Okay, so today is day 18 and most of the eggs have hatched out. I'm really surprised that we've got a pretty even hatch rate across all three incubators. I actually think the Brinzia did a little bit better than the GQF and the uh, hatching time unit, uh, but not enough to really make a big difference. Maybe two or three eggs 
uh, more hatched out of the Brinzia. Um, we did run into some issues during, during lockdown on the GQF and the Brinzia units as far as keeping humidity um, where we wanted it. It wasn't that the humidity wasn't in the zone, it was just that the uh, water reservoirs kept running dry so I had to keep adding water to it. The uh, hatching time unit didn't give me that problem, I just filled up the reservoir and it held humidity throughout the entire um, lockdown procedure. So. Uh, here's the, the uh, number so far. I think we got right around a 70% hatch rate. Uh, the GQF had uh, right around 20 eggs hatch. The Brinzia had like 23, and the hatching time unit had like 21. So um, we did a, have a decent hatch rate out of all three units, um, and I believe you know that all three units are capable of doing the job that they were designed for. So guys, I hope this video... Um, helped you out a little bit as far as the comparison of these three units uh, as far as the uh, hatch rate goes like i said it was pretty even across the board and again these were shipped eggs so we don't really expect you know a really high hatch rate on shipped eggs usually just above 50 percent is about average so uh, again guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you're not already subscribed to the channel please do so it helps me out you can get notified of any new and upcoming videos. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on the next one.